Hello YouTube. This video is going to show you how to work with partitions on hard drives. Let's say you went out and bought a brand new hard drive or a used hard drive and it's either A not showing up in Windows Explorer or B you really don't know what to do with it to be able to start using it. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do. Windows has a built-in application. If you go to Start and Control Panel and if you have the category view I would highly recommend at this point that you switch it to large icons or small icons and you're gonna wanna go to administrative tools and you're gonna go to computer management and then down here you'll see one that says storage if it's not expanded you can click the little arrow to the side and expand it out and you wanna go to disk management now the one we're going to work with is this mobile expert right here. There's one ma major drawback to working with the hard drives in Windows itself. Let's see, delete the volume. Yes, you'll see that it's a FAT32. New simple volume. You're gonna once you start to create a new volume on a hard drive, it's gonna come up with the new volume wizard. In which case, most of it you're just gonna leave it default because it's gonna automatically try to create a volume that is the full hard drive and use all the space for that volume. Okay, and you're gonna see right here that the only options I have are EXFAT and NTFS. So that's one of the drawbacks is a, certain, a drive over a certain size using Windows and uh, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8. It's going to try to force you to do an NTFS partition, which is fine. In most cases, it's exactly what you're going to use anyway. The only time you really need a FAT32 is, let's say you have an older system that you're trying to keep compatible between the two or um, you have a PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 or something like that that you're trying to share music files videos anything like that too you'll have to have FAT32 for that and it's automatically gonna have perform quick format and you can also en en enable the file and folder compression the only th drive that you tend to not want to have the file and folder compression turned on on is your primary drive which is going to be C um, this is going to be a obviously secondary or third or fourth or whatever hard drive just click next and then click finish and you can see right here that it now says formatting doing the quick format it shouldn't take very long it could take a few seconds but it won't take real long and voila now it pops up the autoplay and you can open up the drive to see the files obviously there's none on there now in most cases if you buy a brand new hard drive it's not going to have a name to it it might have a partition already created most of them I'm going to delete the partition off of this again most of them are going to look like that right there it'll say unallocated and it'll just be solid white under the windows computer management tool but as you can see right here is the primary drive disk zero but that's not what I'm using as a C drive disk three is the primary hard drive that the operating system is installed on you see how this right here has that 100 megabyte healthy EFI system partition this right here is my storage drive there's another data drive It'll show you all the removable drives. Of course, there's nothing inside of them, so it says no media. That's the USB drive that I added to do this video. And then you have the CD-ROMs. So if you pop a new drive in, you should be able to find it relatively easy. You'll pay attention to the size and whether or not it's allocated. And you know, if, you, if you've already got drive letters beside most of them, then obviously you're going to figure out real quick which one is the actual drive. Now I'm going to show you a program that is much, much better to use for working with your partitions 
on a Windows system. So I'm going to close this out, close out these, and you're going to want to bring up your web browser, go to www.google.com, and in the text input bar, you're going to want to put in Isus Partition Master. This is a free program that works very, very well. And you'll see the one that says Isus Partition Master Free Edition CNET Download. Click that. And then you'll want to click the green button that says Download Now. And it's going to come up wanting to save it as epm.exe. Just click Save. Now you'll want to open that up. If you're using Google Chrome, all you got to do is click right there where it just finished downloading that, and it'll open up the program, start the installer. And of course, user account control. And first things first, right off the bat at the bottom, you'll see this checkbox that says, I will use the software on my family PC only, and I accept the agreement. Select that and click OK. And at this point, you can go ahead and close your browser. Select Next. If you already have a version installed, it'll pop up asking if you need to uninstall the previous version. Just click Yes. Okay, now I can do the install. Click next. Just leave it on the default where it wants to install it and click next. Now if you're like me, you absolutely hate toolbars and all the extra garbage that this stuff tries to install, so just deselect all those. Click next. And I don't want a desktop icon. If you want one, you can leave that selected but I do want it to check for updates at startup so I'll click next if you have IOBit malware fighter it's going to pop up a deal asking you if, uh, because it has to modify the registry to allow or block click allow and of course naturally this does have a pro version if you want all the extra stuff that is with the pro version by all means purchase it otherwise it's not really necessary and it works great without having the pro version Okay, now that you have the partition software started, you'll see that it looks a little different from the one that Windows has. You'll have the one GPT. This is all the information to that particular hard drive. And you'll see that it has multiple partitions. You have disk 2, which is the storage drive, 1.82 terabyte. That's a 2 terabyte hard drive. You have disk 3, which is the data disk. That's a 300 gig hard drive. You have disk 4, which is the primary hard drive. It's got C drive on it. That's a 1.5 terabyte hard drive. And then here's the one that I just put in, disk 9, the MBR, unallocated. 37.26 gigabyte that is a 40 gig hard drive you want to select that one and then you can right click on it and you have the option to wipe data you can do a partition recovery in case if it lost the partition or if it has a problem you can create a partition or you can view the properties if you scroll down on the graphical part of it you'll see right there's that drive here again you can right click and click create partition and instead of an NTFS I'm gonna make this drive a FAT32 so that way it's compatible with older and newer systems and I'm also gonna give it the name mobile Xfer, which is for mobile transfer and we're gonna create this as a primary instead of a logical you're, you can only have so many primary hard drives so you start getting to the point where if it's not going to be bootable or anything like that in a lot of cases it's better to set it as logical but if you're going to be using that drive with older systems some older systems don't like a lot of logical drives so you, you're better off to set it as a primary 
and of course they'll show you right here the allocated partition size and everything and how much space is left over after this is done there will be none it's going to use the full drive and then just click OK and you'll see now right here that it says pending operation create partition on e disk 9 come up here and click apply one operation is currently pending yes and now it's going to go through and create the partition unfortunately it's not going to format the partition now it's going to update the system information now it shows that drive is a FAT32 so we'll go ahead and do the format now click OK now it's going to show that one pending operation click apply yes now it's going to update that information and I now have larger size drive that is actually a FAT32 hard drive instead of NTFS which means that hard drive will work with Xbox 360 PS3's older computer systems running an older OS say like you're running uh, Windows 98 which is highly unlikely if you're running uh, XP anything like that it'll work with a lot of mobile devices that can read FAT32 there are a lot of uses for FAT32 still but it's not quite as common and for standard practice if you're going to use it for a system that you've got Windows XP up to Windows 8 installed you're going to want to create the partition as an NTFS but this right here will allow you to make a FAT32 drive if needed for other devices that FAT32 is the only file system that it can read. One of the major reasons that I highly recommend that if you're running Windows XP to Windows 8 that if you're setting up a hard drive internal in the system specific to work with the operating system that you uh, format it to NTFS is because FAT32 does not and I repeat does not have the security features and control of access that NTFS has. FAT32 is pretty well wide open and if you've got stuff on there just about anybody can access it especially if you share it so I would highly recommend only using FAT32 for something that you're literally going to use it for just all around general compatibility and just do simple file transfers or something like that I, in most other cases you know if it's not going to connect up to an older system even if you are just doing file transfers with it if it's not going to connect up to like a mobile device or a game console I would still recommend formatting it to NTFS if you know anybody out there that needs help with their systems or that you think this information would be beneficial to by all means feel free to direct them to my videos this information is absolutely out there for everybody and as always watch like and share and have a good day